This pretty good coverage is brought to you by Power Grip, the official retail partner of the European Pro Tour. Welcome to MDG Media's coverage of the Turku Open 2023. This is the sixth stop on the European Pro Tour. We got round two front nine coverage from the MPO lead card. Andrew Gum here in Disc Golf Stream Studio, and I'm joined again by Tommy Tico. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm I'm great. Better than yesterday, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, we got Mikael Hame leading the, the field right now with a 14 under in round one. Sponsored by Clash Discs from Lotti. Yeah. Just about an hour drive north. Mikael uh, does Helsinki. Mikael things, man. That's crazy. And we also have has Mauro Willon here. Hot player of the year. Maybe hottest in, in Europe. So far, he's doing great. Sponsored by, by, by Prodigy. You know, you already know the guy. Yeah, Quok, Christian Kwoksa. Also sponsored by Prodigy from Oulu up in North Finland. 89% uh, C2 in regulation. Hitting the fairway nice and clean. And Otto Mackinen. He's playing. He, like, he's playing really good. One, two rounds. Like first two rounds he's playing really nice but he just can't get enough on the last round because we have seen him a couple times actually this year absolutely yeah he's, he's set, been setting the pace a handful of times and yeah not able to, to close the deal quite yet but he's getting valuable experience still a very young dude and uh very very talented player as well so stacked card again as per usual really really deep field here in the european pro tour Starting things off on hole one, it's a beautiful par five, 240 meters with a tight tunnel shot off the tee that needs to move a little bit right to left and try to land soft here on this wood chip path through the woods here. There's a Mando on the right that you have to move left of to keep you honest. There is some OB up on the road on the right. You want to get your second shot out of this uh, gap and into the open here where it goes a little bit uphill and then at about the 50 meter mark towards the basket it starts to drop off a little bit subtly and then a little more dramatically once you get just past the pin the first shot is taking about 60 70 meters just easy putter up shot somebody playing like a approach shot like a2 lead card starting time 15 30. first on a team representing last disc free pastore and vivo kauppa Mikael Hame! Here's the man shooting that 14 down. Came in uh, 1074 rated. I think it's three tournaments in a row where he's he's had the hot round day one. So this guy's got it figured out how to get things going. He's just got to figure out how to close the deal. Nice little touch shot. Gets a bit of a kick off that tree. Pretty good position. You'd like you'd like to get maybe a little further and a little more left, but that's pretty okay. You can attack the gap from there. I and mean, look at our yeah. like lead card. There's like you have to play first day. You have to play first day eleven under to be in here. Like this is crazy. Okay, maybe this course is kind of soft, but still like the pressure is so big when you have to like birdie almost every hole <laughs> yeah that's that's the level uh, th it was great scoring conditions yesterday the wind was quite down today we're going to see it a little more gusty representing and Rodici discs and Troppari, christian kuoksa christian kuoksa one of my kuoksa. favorite players yeah yeah good good friend of yours and teammate from Droppery. One of the furthest throwers in the game, but also developing a ton of touch game too now. So he's got mad skills and a ton of potential. One of the possibly the highest ceilings of any out of anybody with the, with his physical abilities. He got some problems starting the season with the. Mäkinen. With the touchy shots, but he definitely getting it better. Yep. Been working hard in the off season. Also did his military service as well as this man, Otto Mackinen. I 
like it's a good kick back to the fairway and a, and a good spot now. Friendly kick from there. Yeah, so we're off with our lead card here on moving day. One of my favorite starting holes in disc golf. I really like this. It's kind of like a really touchy sort of placement shot off the tee. And then if you get yourself in good position, you can you can power through the gap. And then from there, it should be, you know, pretty wide open to get up and down. But kind of like a, a lot of variation just within this one hole itself and the shot shaping and, and, and what's it required. This course is actually nice. Like you, do, you don't need to have like crazy power. You just have to hit your lines. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be in, in control and, and have a just a certain basic level of, of, of skills, but you have to execute. Yeah, you have to make sure you you're on point. But I, yeah, I, I like that type of course because I don't have that insane power. So I, I, like even even I can score pretty well on this course if I'm feeling it. You know, there's a few that are out of my reach, but um, a, a lot of it's just kind of more technical, precision stuff. But lots lots of variation, and you, you need a very versatile uh, arsenal of shot. Cox actually shapes to get was a little too right, so he just only had like a pitch out play. Yeah, he had to just pitch back to the fairway. He, he gets pretty far out of the gap, but it, it's there was a little bit of headwind and it turned over a little bit. He's going to be in a difficult spot. He is safe and in bounds there. Miko working with some tricky footing up there on the granite rock. It's a, a touch too much hyzer, but he's pin high, circle's edge for a, a birdie look to get started. Alto with a nice flick, but it's just a little juicy. And there you see that that little slope behind, pushing it outside the circle. Already with the Heiser forehand approach. Comes down nice and soft right there. Great shot, great shot. Picking up birdie on the first hole. Feels amazing. Yeah, perfect way to get started. Ooh, Quoxa basket hunting there from a, a very tricky lie. He had a patent pending, very like overstable kind of Anheuser shot, and it really just flashed the chains there. He's going to have about nine or ten meters left. Nico misses that one left and low, and he's going to have a little bit of work left to do there. Kind of got a little squirrely in the end of it. Oh, great putt, great starting putt from Kuoksa, about nine meters. Yeah, great feeling to get your round started with a solid putt. Helps the confidence, and that, that, that was not an easy putt. It, it was, you know, facing some kind of a bit of a headwind that was shifting a little bit uh, from, from left to right, so really good control, and a nice, nice putt there from Ika as well. Otto's was kind of uncommitted a little bit low and short. And when you're... And when yeah, you're like nice putting pretty. straight with your legs and there's a slope or hill like under you, it's like get a little tricky. Yeah, that's right. You don't get the same kind of push up off from your back foot, right? You have to kind of make a little bit of an adjustment if you're dealing with that elevation change. Moving on, hole two, par four, wide open, 225 meters. OB right and left, but a very generous uh, landing zone with you know, quite a wide fairway. It starts to narrow down when you get towards the green, and that's the main element of difficulty on this one. You see the basket perched up on that little mound and OB directly behind it and to the right. Also some obstruction on the green if you're over there on the left. The sec second shot is and, yeah, this coming harder because the green is tight of that OB. You don't really want to go OB, so the mistake you can right. make is only leave yourself like 10 meters. Like you don't want to like attack pin that aggressive. Yeah, yeah it's good to kind of try to try to check it up just a little bit short to stay safe from that OB. And this one, this hole can be quite exposed to the wind. It's nothing crazy, but it is a little gusty today, so always something to take into account on an open hole like this. Walk 
walks up with a smooth hyzer. I think this is his Hunter. That's like a Glimmer D2 500 signature disc for him. Otto Mackin in, smashing on a Calvin Heimberg Halo Star Destroyer. And that's way up there. Oh, those Halo Destroyers are amazing, man. I love to throw them yeah. a lot. The overstability, like they can fight through the wind. You, you can always like lay on the disc. Yeah, those are some bombers for sure. And you can trust them to get back at the end. Hear the same story for Mikael, Halo Destroy Destroyer. Yeah. Oh, he, move on this. he overcooked Whoa. it and went OB. Hey, yes. He went well, too that's, much that's right. The OB there. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna have to re like throw from the from where he went out, which is pretty far back. He's gonna have a, quite a long distance to save the bogey now. Quaxa came in a little bit to the left side, I think. Was it? Wasn't it Maori? Oh, yeah, sorry. That was my, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no worries, man. Now we're having fun here. Yeah, yeah. Life comes at you quick yeah. sometimes. I glance down for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Quaxa. Just keep Peace enjoying. Man. Keep enjoying the commentating <laughs> self. Definitely having a good time. Dream job for me, for sure. Wow. And wow. What, a, <laughs> what an upshot. <laughs> Skipping it up off the koozie. This is such a tough green to stick. You really can't do it any better than that. Beautiful. Here's Mika throwing four after the OB, and he's getting it to skip up there on the on the mound as well. Two really brilliant approaches there. You don't often see him stick that close. Otto a little bit out of position after the wind kind of lifted his forehand, and he just has to pitch up. Great pass. There's from, Mauri Wielman. from seven meters. It's, yeah, we've been watching him drill those all year long. Super confident putter. Never seems stressed. Just execution. And some uh, tap in pars and birdies, respectively. Moving on to hole three, par three, 125 meters. Another wide open shot. Uh, just this kind of bush to beat on the right, but it shouldn't really come into play too much. Um, OB left and long. Yeah, kind of a, just basically a stock hyzer for most of you big arm guys in the MPO division. But it can be, you know, another hole that's affected by the wind. And then it can be speed control issues for the really, really far throwers. You know, they have to worry about blowing past with that OB behind. And one thing I want to, Notice that there is a, actually FBO pad about 20 meters closer. So I really like the idea to FBO having their own T pads because the idea, like right away, is different. Because yeah, na naturally, yeah, it changes. exactly like naturally, FBO like they are not throwing that far as MPO. So that they can take the birdies. Course designer. Yeah, they made a few changes. Exactly. For the FPL layout, and I, I really approve. It's It seems to be uh, working out really good. Nice, nice that they can um, often shoot under par or closer to par. Yeah, we saw uh, Maori shot actually did get stuck in that bush, and now Mikael's skipping OB, so... A little bit of a uh, little bit of trouble here for the lead card. Of course, uh, yeah. Here, here now you see that the wind is definitely swirling a little. Maori does good to put it close. Easy par for him. Walks with a tester. Yeah, just a little bit right. Look like the wind might have hung it up. A little bit. Mika 
Meanwhile, trying to save his three. Comes up short. It's going to be a bogey for him and kind of a disastrous start for the, the leader coming in. He's going to, with that, he's going to drop back to 12 under for the event and plus two for the round. Solid putt there from Otto. Nice hat. That's a, that's his signature th thing. The Marimekko hat. That's, he's looking awesome in that. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it, initially that was the only way I could identify him. Now I got a better idea of what he actually looks like. <laughs> his face was usually kind of covered with that hat. <laughs> I just knew that was the guy with the Marimekko hat. He's a great guy. But he's, he's definitely made, guy. yeah. Yeah, I haven't really met him, but he's certainly made a name for himself this year uh, on, on Disc Golf Stream. He's shot some hot rounds, like we said, done some amazing things on coverage. Got a, a lot of great highlights. Who's popping, popping in the scene, like uh, Otto Mäkinen, who we've been playing a couple of times in lead, and Miro Ryhänen, Mauri Vilman, those guys like making some moves to yeah make those yeah. their names into this thing. Yeah, people we weren't really familiar. Well, most people weren't familiar with you know last season, but. They've they've really done a lot to uh, grow their brand and gain more fans and um, pretty uh, awesome, awesome opportunity to for them to develop their career that way. Hole, hole four is a par four shorty, but a goodie. It's uh, oh look at that deer. Oh hello there. Little rack on that little little buck. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> there's a lot of nice uh, wildlife on this site. It's uh, right in the middle of Turku, but it's uh, built on an old landfill, so. Really great shapes to the land and a very, really peaceful spot that's very undeveloped. That roller was a little inside, and it, but l luckily it kicked out from that dungeon. You should be okay from there. Do you throw this any one rollers, is actually the easy. Andrew? Do, do, do. Um, I, I have a, a pretty good forehand roller. Um, I, I've been trying to work on the backhand roller game, but it's yeah, not my specialty. But I would like to have a better one because I think that's a good way to kind of uh, cheat some distance sometimes, you know, without too much effort. And those are funny. Rollers are so funny. I didn't know. I just, it just hit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fun thing to do, isn't it? I, I definitely would like to be better. It's, it, but like most of the places I play in Finland are really forested, you know, and they, like I, I like the wooded tracks with the tight lines and stuff. So there isn't really that much use for it where, where I play regularly, but... It's definitely a great trick to have in the bag. That's true. Oh, last two shots weren't too much left, but this this is one of the holes where you can be where, wherever you like, whatever where are you, you can still bury this. Yeah, easiest one on the course, three point five eight average. So fifty three percent of the field getting the birdie. Kuoksaksa from a knee with a very technical shot. Wow. Bullseye. Exactly. This is what I just told you guys. <laughs> Man, that was impressive. Down on a knee with a, a forehand approach. Uh, Mikael just catching the nubs. He's having a rough start to his day. Not what we were hoping for. He has been quite up and down this year, you know, shooting the hot rounds, but then also having some struggles here and there. But yeah, Kuoksa is a, uh, well, awesome birdie there from Otto, but Quax's approach was really great. He was quite out of position, you know. To, to have that good angle and speed control and get it to slide right up to the basket was beautiful. Do you know what he's throwing for those kind of forehand approaches? I think that was a, a that was a five. He'd been throwing that a lot. Oh. Okay. Backhand. Nice good birdie forehand. Forehand. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. A five is actually one of the greatest disc from Brother J, I believe. Yeah, Maori Vilman's using that all the time, and he's had like a million highlights this year with it already. So, popular disc. It's a little more overstable than I would think it would be. 
but um, yeah, it's really nice flyer, very trusty and useful. Feels really sure. good in hand. Definitely, nice flat top. And yeah, hole five, par three, 88 meters downhill, moving left to right through a decent gap there on the left. Definitely a, shapes up good for a forehand for the righty. The, the backhand turnover is a lot more touchy, but it is doable. But yeah, forehand if you got it. I think these guys all got it pretty much. Wow. That's close. Nice one. I know Otto has mixed bag, but I don't really know what disc he's throwing. Like I believe that was zone. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I think he threw a zone off the tee on, on number one. Yeah. Yeah, th and uh, I don't know a lot of destroyers. I actually had to. I have to ask about his disc because he's wow. He's on the cover. It's so five right there. <sighs> well, <laughs> the great disc. There we go. <laughs> Like an advertisement for it right there, smacking the base. But yeah, yeah, you can check up with Otto what he's throwing. It would be interesting to know. I'd be curious. Yeah, he 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 he, he have been playing so many times in coverage. So I think if spectators yeah. want to know, so we we should ask. Yeah, it's a great idea. It would be nice to pass that information along to our viewers. And I'd like to know just for my own interest. Mikael throwing this ABR X3 and just a little short, but right on the circle's edge. Opportunity for him to get his round going with a big putt here. Definitely not the start he was hoping for, plus two through four, but look at that perfect putt. Yeah, but I'm not sure. That's what he needed to get things moving. I'm not sure, was it was it a, a three, ABR three? I think that might be actually oh. faster, like... Spice, spice? Is it spice from Clash Disc? Oh, oh, oh! It could be. Could it could have been a spice? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because he he was went it, like a little, little with Anheuser, and it still comes back with AVR three. I I think he don't. It's more flat. Yeah, he doesn't have that much power with his forehand to reach basket with putter. That's true. Actually, now that you say that, I do remember now that, that it was a spice. Yeah, thanks. I'm so used to seeing him throw that ABR X3 on a lot of those he, kind of he, he used that a lot. shots. But yeah, that's a, a pretty overstable fairway driver from Clash Discs. I think it's Eric Oakley's uh, signature disc, right? Maybe. Anyway, hole six, part three, 109 meters, uphill at the end of it. Uh, Got to get through this gap here that the drone's just about to fly through. And there you see the basket up there. Pretty open once you get through the gap. A little bit of obstruction there on the right right side behind it. But if it's a big power forehand if you have that. Also, there, we've seen some really beautiful turnover lines like Isaac Robinson yesterday. Just kind of put it right underneath the basket with a perfect touch. So yeah, many options here. Or at least two good ones. Maybe there could be some kind of a forehand roller or something, or even backhand, if you got that. That one seems to have caught the edge of the gap. Might be in circle two, but I didn't actually see where it finished. Yeah, just just about in, in the gap, so it's about 15 meters, 16 meters maybe. Huge highlight putt for him, if he can make it. Yeah, good up. Great opportunity. D2 here from Maori. And look at that. Perfect shape. Wow, bullseye. I yeah. I believe that's the bullseye. Yep. Yeah, join the MDG family here. Support us on Patreon. It goes a really long way to help us continue producing these high quality videos for you. European disc golf. Yeah, from Coaxel, so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's right there as well. Mikael looking to follow suit with the forehand line. A little early. But it fights through. His putty.
Yeah, definitely a slow start for Mikael. Everybody else already three down on the round. He's still over par. Giving that one a great run. Just hits the top band. Oh, this is even closer. Like I think this is like 30 meters. Great beat from Otto. Yeah, 12 there. <gasps> no. Oh, no. Very short miss there from Quaxa. Caught a lot of chains and then just kind of flopped out the nubs. A little bit low right, I guess. That happens for everybody. Yeah, it wasn't off by much, but, you know, sometimes they just, they're just off a little bit and they don't collect. Sometimes those go in, too. It just kind of depends on what kind of reaction you get off the, the chains and the cage and stuff. But, yeah, that's why you want to hit them. It gets you smiling so many times, like, uh, oops. But then it's like, okay, no yeah. worries. I will take that 10 out of the 10. <laughs> 10 out of the 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some guys look really disgusted. They shake their head. Others just smile. Yeah, but yeah, it usually gets a reaction out of people when they when they have a putt that's not quite perfect and it still goes in. When it's in, I, I'm, I'm happy. Why, I'm happy all, all, always when it's Canadian. Anytime it goes in. That's why the, like the best putters in the world, they're really aiming for an exact point in the middle just to mitigate those kind of ones that are... Um, not not quite spit outs, but just like not quite perfect putts either. Hole seven, very difficult par four, 189 meters, uphill a little bit, moving right to left, tight gap, both with the, the landing zone off the tee shot and with the second shot in through to the green. Lots of trees to beat on this one. This is looking good, if it can fade out. Yeah, right on time. Nothing else that's perfect. Played. Yeah, Maori, five through six. Just what we've seen basically all year from him, just chugging right along the birdie train. And leading by it's basically the conductor. Three strokes. Yeah. Yeah. Came in, I think he came in behind Mikel. Yeah, two, st two strokes. Two strokes, yeah. So he's he's already distanced himself from from the pack, really, and, and from the day one leader. And it seems like Maori Vielman's like the conductor of the birdie train. He's always right there, driving the thing this year anyway. Mikao back to the Halo Destroyer. Big old hyzer. Maybe just a little early on the inside line, but there are some opportunities to... to sneak it in on that left side if you, yeah, there's, if you get lined up right. Here we see him. There's the sneaky gap. Yeah, right where Mikael's going. To the low, but with the skips it would be better. And he is circle edge? Yeah, circle's edge for birdie. A little low, but... It's tough to get a birdie look on this one. But when? Yeah, but good good from where he was. Otto overshot the landing zone a little bit. Now he's trying to go around the back door to sneak in here, which is pretty difficult to do. I, I, I think he's somewhere over there. Like maybe 15, 20 meters, but I, uh, I think there's a lot of stuff in his way. Not really a lot of gaps on that left side to come in. Maori up there somewhere, circle two, but also could be obstructed. Walks up. What a hit! Hyping it down the gap. Catches a tree at the very end of it, but he's going to be there. Circle's edge for a birdie look. That's a great shot. That, now you see how thick it is there on the left side. That was around 80 meters, a little uphill. He went standstill putter. <laughs> can you imagine? Dude, yeah, can you dude. imagine? Adam, can you imagine yourself doing that thing? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's that's way, way out of my range <laughs> for a putter shot. That's for sure. I'd be lucky to get up there with a fairway. Otto struggling a little bit here on this one. Make out for birdie here. Pretty low. Trying to get back to par. 
Oh. And another top uh, cage, or yeah, top cage nubs there. There's a couple of those this round. He's just a little bit off. We have seen those, like, but it is. we have seen those many times. And Guaxa, let's wow. go. Sorry, sorry for that, but I'm excited. Every time, like, no. every time Guaxa is doing doing those things, I'm so excited. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great to root for your friends, and everyone likes Guaxa. What, what's not to like about the dude? He's super lovable. Oh, for sure. That putt kind of caught the, the very bottom of the band, and it sort of, like, just knocked it straight down in. But you saw, it's like... Great. It went in, and he was smiling like, "Thank you, thank you for going in." So those reaction like the yeah. best. <laughs> yeah, that's a great feeling to get the birdie, especially on this hole, second most difficult on the course. At, uh, oh, I guess it was um, fourth most difficult on this day, second most difficult yesterday. Four point one five average, so the field's starting to get this one a little bit more figured out. 18% birdies, 28% bogeys are worse. Hole eight, par four, 187 meters. Just gotta get out of this gap and it's not too tight or anything. It's just a little bit, well, quite a bit uphill, I guess, off the tee. You got that OB on the right to worry about a little bit if you are if you overturn it, but it should be pretty well committed hyzer uh, for the backhand righty shot to get yourself somewhere into the middle of the fairway and then the approach can be a little bit touchy with this right to left sloping hillside. A good aiming point is like a little bit right of that kind of dead tree with the something growing up out of the middle of it. Still don't know what that is, but yeah, just some kind of the only real landmark up on the green. So it's about five meters from the basket. You can try to aim somewhere for that and hope it'll just kind of trickle down towards the basket. Common plays backhand, forehand. Because slope is better, second right. shot is better, with side arm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just kind of crash it into the hillside with a forehand driver. And but I, should check up nicely that way. But I've seen many, many backhands just wide, wide hyzer and count on skips. Yep. And that's actually works yeah. pretty good also. Yeah, you just have to make sure you're landing at about, you know, 10 or 15 meters up there on the on the top of the hill and letting the ground play. Yeah, it depends how far are you and what disc you're throwing. Like if you're going like distance driver or favorite driver, you maybe have to go like 20 meters because skips are like right, getting right. really, really hard. That's a great point, yeah. This one pretty heavy on the hyzer. That works out okay. Those are it's pretty hard to mess this tee shot up yeah, too exactly. much, isn't it? It's I was just uh, saying that only mistake you can do here is go OB with f first shot. Yeah. Yeah, it would take a pretty bad shank to hit anything coming out of the gap. And then it's, yeah, mostly just like if you're trying to kind of push it a little bit too straight and then it can flip over maybe a little bit or something, but it really shouldn't happen. I don't know, with that forehand wow. approach you were talking about, aiming for that for that uh, Dead tree. object there on the green and it works out perfectly. I don't know, is that Kelo? Do you remember we, we sp spoke about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Kelo? So uh, I, a standing, I think that might be a Kelo, yeah. Standing <laughs> dead tree. Let us know. But guys. then it's, it, it's kind of weird because it's got that something growing in the middle. I don't know if it's actually like, I think it's some other, other plant or tree growing up inside of the old dead tree is what it looks like to me. Oh, way too high from Kuoksa. But land, land pretty nice. Around nine yeah. meters, but that was that was a little too high. Worked out okay, but yeah, you'd like to put it a little closer. Yes, sir. Big out, Big corner pocket. Great pot. Back yeah, to circles even. edge gets it to drop there, left corner pocket, and he's back to par. Now he so can start to a, score. Yep, it's been a bit of a battle. This uh, front nine so far for Mikau, but he's starting to trend in the right direction now. He's shaking off some of that bad juju, and he's back on track. Great, Great putt again from Kwoksa. He's looking really solid. Five down for the round. Great one. And Maori moves to six down. 
for the round. So pretty hot start for him. Otto with a par. He slowed down a little bit after that turkey. Try to get back on track here on hole nine. Uphill, par three, 89 meters. Super tight gap right here. It's early enough off the tee that you should be able to, to hit it, but if you don't, then it's it's a really bad position there to try to get up and down for par. This is this is a lot more uphill than it looks on camera. You gotta kind of get the height right and try to get it up here for a birdie look. There is some OB behind. Doesn't come into play too often, but with these hard throwing MPO players, that can be an issue too. The hole is playing about 105 meter, maybe 110, something about that, around that. So yeah. I know Quoxa is going with a five putter. And made it. Whoa, check it out. Well, <laughs> made oh, it perfectly. He the... <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, chasing. He actually hit the wheels on that. He's chasing Maori. <laughs> Pressure is on him. Yeah, and he. He's. he's uh, Going for some aces too. It seems like he almost got uh, 16 yesterday. Hit the cage. As we saw, that one hit the the wheels there on that um, base of that basket. Hole nine, kind of surprising to me, was uh, the fourth easiest on the course at 2.78 average. I guess it's uh, Is there this any gap isn't too much of an issue for the for the big guns. Any any OBs? Um, Can you see that? Good question. Yeah, the, yeah, there should be that kind of a stat. Just give me a moment. There's one. Does Two, I, three OBs. Yeah, I think I think this one is playing that easy is because OB oh well, a great bit because OB is not really coming to play, so you can't like mess it too much with this hole yeah it's pretty hard to bogey it right it's, if you don't birdie it's usually a par at least and the gap is about what, I, like I 10 meters from you or 15 max so like it's kind of yeah to you shouldn't really yeah. miss it yeah. from that distance right with these guys for oh, sure oh Otto chains out yeah heavy chains. chains out heavy right side we saw look, we look saw pretty good we saw that same Last day from Vanna Macallan hole six. Those are like surprising that They're heavy chains are not taken in every time. But. Yeah, yeah, it look, looked pretty good. That one was a little bit right, but could have stuck. That's right in the center, though. That's what you got to do, you know, if you want to have no doubt about it, put it right on the pole. So 35% birdies in the field today on this one, only 10% bogey or worse. So that, that's, how I think, what kind of keeps the average pretty low. So yeah, there we have it. Front nine in the books. That was a smooth, fun oh, start right. to this uh, second round, wasn't it? That went, that went actually pretty fast. I'm not, again, surprised at oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's it so fast yeah time flies when you're having fun that's for sure and these guys are performing very well Mikael struggling actually though quite a bit right right back where he started and dropping down the leaderboard from the top down to a tie for sixth Maori on absolute fire Kwoksa finishing with the turkey he's getting it done super exciting uh, looking forward to the rest of this um, moving day round come on back for the back nine big thanks to everyone yeah yes thank you Thank you, Andrew, for this night. Thank you. See you soon on the back nine. Yep. Okay.